So welcome to another show. The, today's episode is about survivorship bias. Now, I don't know whether or not you've you've heard of this, but it is a, a quite quote unquote common thing that people experience, but also quite a common thing that people know about. Instead of just diving in with an explanation, I'm going to use an example. So during World War II, aeroplanes used to return to base. They all used to return with bullet holes, of course. And what those in charge determined was that the planes need to be reinforced in those areas because they're the areas that were being shot at, of course. Now, that should make logical sense, shouldn't it? The planes come back, you see they've been shot, and you think, well, actually, they're the parts that are damaged and they're the parts that we therefore need to reinforce. And this is where survivorship bias comes from. Because if you think about it logically, if they've returned with those holes in the planes, it means that they have survived. It means that those planes have come back. They've been hit in, in certain areas, but they have still returned. What would be more interesting to understand is actually which parts of the plane that were hit meant that they couldn't return. So what survivorship bias actually is, it's a logical error that occurs when we focus on surviving examples as opposed to overlooking or, or, or rather, while we overlook those that maybe failed or didn't actually make it through the pro process itself. What that can do is that can lead to overly optimistic views because we ignore the failures. Now, it's not a case of maybe ignoring it, but because we don't see it, we often overlook it. And that can lead to an inaccurate representation of, of the reality. Again, thinking back to that example, if you didn't think outside the box and think, well, actually, what about the planes that didn't make it? You would continue to reinforce the areas that showed areas that had been shot. But evidently, they weren't fatal to the aircraft itself. So why is it that we only look at survivors? Why do we not look at the non-survivors? This distorted view can have a, a massive impact on our decision-making and ultimately the results that we get from that. When the bias is present itself, it, it obviously leads to, to poor decision-making, doesn't it? Because you're drawing conclusions based on incomplete data. You've maybe underestimated the risks and difficulties involved in your next parts of your process, let's say, your next, next course of action. Now, survivor bias or survivorship bias, rather, is not only found in that war example. It's found in many areas that maybe you won't think about. And that's what we're going to look at. So let's take a few examples. Business success stories. So obviously many books and articles highlight strategies of successful companies. They say that, you know, if you follow Apple and Microsoft and X Limited, Y Limited, 
that you will you will generate success. Now on paper that seems feasible, doesn't it? If we follow and copy a similar narrative to J.K. Rowling, let's say J.K. Rowling, will we create a novel or set of novels as successful as her? If we follow Microsoft and Apple verbatim, will we generate a company that's as successful as those? Probably not. Because what we ignore and don't include is the countless companies that maybe followed a similar strategy but didn't achieve success. It's hard to actually take that data into account, isn't it? And that's the whole point of survivorship bias. You see success, you think, okay, this is what caused it, let's do that. But it doesn't take into account the non-survivors. Health and fitness might be another one. Fitness programs will show you success stories, won't they? Of individuals who followed this program or that program, slim fast or whatever else, and achieved success. But it didn't include those people who didn't see success from, from those programs or dropped out for whatever reason, whether it's injuries or motivation. So again, how can we know that that's the best course of action? It happens in universities as well, in any form of education. Universities, Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, they will often boast about the success of their graduates. And they will sort of imply that if you come here, you are guaranteed success. But what about all of the other people that went there but didn't achieve success it could be private school it could be university as i've said it could be a training program but they aren't included in the data especially the data that you're going to see so you can start to get a picture of this aren't you now but actually can we just follow those who are successful and hope to achieve success i would probably say no I would say that there's more to it than that. So how can we avoid survivorship bias? Well, the first and obvious one is to, an to analyse both successes and failures. Because then you can look at all of the data and understand, understand what's important and why something failed, why something succeeded. And actually, is it that itself that cause success or are there other variables that maybe we're not looking at when we're looking at the data can we ask the right questions ask what happened to those who didn't make it and the reasons why a lot of the failures aren't always visible either they're hidden and these are the ones that are important. They're the ones that are hard to come by, but also the, the important ones as to how to affect your decision. Now, look, there are some rules for success in some respects, but there's also those who break the rules, become successful, and then it's deemed that they are, that's a new set of rules to follow. But that's not the case. There's no hard and fast rules to success but it's a very easy thing to do as sheep is to to say that we'll just follow this process it seems to have worked let's follow it a b and c and let's hope to get success it does not work like that you can't just look at the successful examples because for every success there is more uh, you know many failures who follow the same regime but didn't find success you know they might get up at 4 a.m like a lot of these professional athletes but they didn't find success. What's the reason behind it? So what we have to do is learn from a broad range of examples and avoid perspectives that may be skewed in nature. Because what survivorship bias essentially does 
is to distort our understanding and affect our decision making progress. Because what we do is we overlook failures and unsuccessful attempts. And instead, we just look at the successful and think that we can imitate that and breed success.